This episode of Nintendo Pod Block is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our Fennial podcast, head over to patreon.com slash bossrushmedia or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Alright, welcome to Nintendo Power Black here on Boss Rush Games. I'm your host, the Last Excited ADV. Joining me is the one, the only bossman himself, Mr. Curry Derrick. Hello, good sir. Hello, happy happy Thursday night at eleven fifty five p.m. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's time for a mini block. Um, apparently we're going to be busy this week, so, um, we had to kind of record early. Um, we will be back on our regular, uh, schedule program, I should say. Um, well, but this to be week- fair, to be, to be fair, they, nobody's going to notice any changes. It's still coming out for, on Tuesday for patrons and Wednesday for everybody. Uh, yes. but we, we are recording on a Thursday because, um, I am unavailable this weekend and ed is working on sunday uh because it's my wife's working birthday. this weekend and uh it's just uh <laughs> we decided to record on thursday after my tower casuals recording because of uh <laughs> that's when i thought it would be best except for we just recorded a two a two and a half hour <laughs> episode of tower <laughs> casuals because bungie decided to drop two blogs this weekend so <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my my life hurts so it's fine though it's fine uh Corey, i was checking my email today and uh it said my zelda switch is ready to be picked up it came early uh so i'm gonna go uh after i get off of work friday i'm gonna go and get it and pick it up i'm so excited are you sure are you sure they're not gonna cancel it before you get there (laughs) No, it they show me that is already for pickup. I think I don't know. Something happens like I think if you pre-order something way in advance, it looks like if you don't confirm something, they end up canceling it. And it's just like that's weird. If I pre-ordered it like two days or anything before that game or that system come out, you guys take the money and be like, Oh, okay, it's ready for pickup. It's very weird with Best Buy. Um but yeah. I will have my uh, Switch uh, Friday, and I'm nice. super excited. Nice. Yes. Um, yeah, so Eric, like we said, everybody, this is going to be a mini box. Um, we're not going to go, like, do the full um, rundown like we do for the show. Uh, but, Corey, I, I do got to tell you. So you know that I'm playing Jedi Survivor, and I'm playing Redfall. And I'm you trying are? to get those. Ga- yeah, um, I'm trying to get. <laughs> not get with you. No, I'm trying to get those games ready for a review for next week. Um, so those kind of that's kind of my focus. I may be a Sunday late in case um, of anything happens with the patches or like if they bring out a patch or something they update the game and everything. Um, so. For some unknown reason, and I'm playing both of those games well, they're both being played on Series X. They both been crashing on me. Mm-hmm. And, like, That's why I stopped playing it, Jedi Survivor because it kept crashing on me. Yeah, I was just like, what the word? It didn't, it, it's, it make me, I got to do like a whole, the section that I just did, I got to do all over again. And then with Redfall, it was just like you lost internet connection. How? Mm-hmm. You know, I thought this game was supposed to be connected to the internet. I thought it was going to be. It is. it is, though. It's a the game as a service. It's got to be connected to the internet. So I thought they was changing it. I thought they, they said that they weren't going to do that anymore. Well, they haven't put that part of that. They haven't updated it yet. Okay. So, so it's still, still technically. <laughs> Connected to the Still internet. technically, yeah. And it's yeah. weird. I'm just like, like how if I if I started the game right back in, it's gonna be like, okay, you're connected to the internet. Let's go. And like, 
it's so weird. So, um, at the those games crash, I just threw in Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, Future Redeemed, uh, DLC and started playing that. Um, great music, uh, but I am going to get back into that game a little bit later and everything, but I am enjoying it and stuff. Um, I, I was holding that off that game until I did the Series X stuff and uh, just... I don't know why these games are so um not unpolished. Um, no, I mean, I think, it's safe to, I, th- I think it's safe to say that a lot of these games are unpolished. I mean, Redfall in particular is like, it's not Redfall's not terrible by any means. It's not like mm. I would say, I mean, I think the 6.57 ish score is probably where it's at, but also like, coming from a place where I play a lot of game games as a service like destiny. And, you know, I was mm-hmm. really into the division for a while and, uh, see if, I mean, to me, this could be like a sea of thieves situation where like this game just keeps getting supported and updated and everything. And, you know, I mean, remember see if these was like, now granted it didn't crash or anything, but it was like, it was pretty bare bones and they just kept adding to it and adding to it. And then it became, yeah, you know, essentially microsoft's biggest game at this at this point besides minecraft right so uh Mm -hmm. i think you look at something like redfall and there is potential there and i said this on the boss rush podcast uh where like i see a lot of interesting things in this game and the lore is awesome and i think this game has a ton going for it uh on paper but they have to fix the little things like AI, animation, uh, the texture work in some of this. In some of this game is like some of it's phenomenal, and some of it looks like a PlayStation Three game, right? Like it just, I don't, I don't understand what happened. Uh, and then you know all that stuff. Came, I mean, Phil Spencer was on what the kind of funny X cast. I didn't watch it, but yeah. I didn't watch it, but I read a lot of a lot of it, uh, and you know it's it's interesting to hear him i don't want to go into it here i think it's something i do want to discuss at some point but like essentially bethesda even though microsoft owns them kind of operates separate from xbox at this point right uh right the only kind of strand there to connect them is that they're owned by microsoft so most of these games are probably going to be exclusive to xbox moving forward right in pc i guess but like yes. other than that like bethesda as a publisher and as a man from a mar- managerial standpoint um runs separate from xbox proper and that includes arcane and i think xbox needs to do a better job of unifying bethesda into xbox game studios and i think there needs mm-hmm. to be some not not that like the higher up people need fired or anything right like i don't i don't i know people are saying that phil spencer should resign and stuff i don't think that i think him no i think him and sarah bond and matt booty to an extent like they have and and aaron greenberg i guess to a, a lower extent right but have a, a tall task to turn the ship around for microsoft uh and to have this game come out in the state that it is like it's it it looks bad for for xbox even though it's a quote-unquote bethesda game right and right. i think they need that middle manager uh i was watching i was watching uh david jaffe's kind of coverage on this today too and he said that maybe yeah. they need some sort of like uh, like a uh, uh, like a muscle, like the person that goes in and checks on checks in, like you know, because he was talking about how when he was at uh, Santa Monica and they were making God of War and God of War Two, uh, he left during the 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 full production of God of War Two. But when those games were in production, they had people come in and it was like all hands on deck every time somebody from Sony higher up would come in, right? And Microsoft mm-hmm. doesn't do that currently and uh 
he said maybe they need someone like that. And I kind of agree with that. Like they need that person that goes into like, and I know like company, like these studios have producers and I know that Redfall was like well into development at the acquisition. And mm-hmm. again, I don't want to go all into it, but like they need, they, they need that person to go in and make sure everything's on track and ready to go. Right. And, and uh, I think Starfield has a lot of pressure on it on unnecessary on on not not unnecessary because i think it is kind of necessary but like on it's it, the pressure that's on starfield is not fair given the circumstance right and uh right i just i kind of i want i i want xbox to succeed right i think they're doing so many i think great we all do and to just see something like redfall kind of come out and 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 stumble like it sucks as a fan of xbox it, right and but i don't i, the, I don't be, be, before you go just real quick i think i think if xbox had been putting out games consistently like triple a titles right consistently and redfall was like a six and a half or a seven and be like oh okay well i guess they could have one but like this is their first triple a title since halo right and you know i mean we've had pentiment we've had grounded we've had dlc for forts of uh horizon uh there have been some pc ports like uh flight simulator and and a few other things right but like man this was supposed to be the game that like kind of kicked off their second burst of of here's xbox moving forward and they even ended their e3 their last e3 presentation on redfall right yeah promoting it as this big thing and it's like Man, this this kind of just just kind of sucks, and I I hope that this fall is better. You know, well, it's it's very been up and down with Microsoft with Xbox because like we had this situation with Crackdown Three, we had we having this now with Redfall. You know, Psychonauts Two came out, and that came out to. I mean, it got game of the year for some people for Xbox, but really, who was talking about it? Like, who was really buying and supporting that game? Um, like, it, it, that that was another one that came and went. Uh, Forza Horizon Wait, Five, Psychonauts Two. Oh yeah, I mean, like, I mean yeah. that came it came out, but I mean, as great as it is, as it is, it fell by the wayside. And you know, because Forza Horizon it's, Five. <laughs> Because Psychonauts is a mirror's edge situation where everybody says they love the game and then when it comes out nobody buys it, right? I mean that's like that's like the whole thing. Well, like well, people say they want these titles and then nobody buys them and then they're like, why don't we get more? Well, nobody buys them, right? And I think well, and I think I, that's where Game Pass comes in and it can be like, Well, you don't have to buy it, you just have to be the, on the subscription. And we've seen things like we've seen things take off from there from Game Pass, right? Like grounded and mm-hmm. And you know some of the Minecraft spinoff games, and uh, but th- th- that's that's the kind of the, that's kind of the question is that if these games are so average and disappointing, why are you staying on the surface of Game Pass? I'm not I'm I'm not trying, not trying to say that you because should still go out and buy these party. games. Well, true, it's, but I'm just but that that's the thing about it. I'm just like if if you. As a player, a consumer, and we're going to get back into Nintendo because Nintendo kind of plays a role in this. If you are, as a consumer, are so displeased with the software that this company is bringing out that you are paying for a new subscription, and regardless of third party or not, I'm thinking, I'm, afraid, I'm kind of like not really adding that to the factor. Why are you still supporting this? Because the thing about it is, I'm like, that well, means that's the you big just question now, right? Right. And you just accept the average and the disappointment. I don't if I mean, because once again, this is a bring no car no concern about uh Activision. Um this doesn't bring no concern of any other um department and or other studio in Zenimax. Um doesn't bring no concern about uh Xbox Game Studio and you know uh with the with their actual developers and stuff. It's just like 
if you're going to accept this and feel like this is average and everything, you don't have no right to complain because you know what quality you are getting. And if you're not pleased with it, then remove your remove the support from it and go play something else. Mm -hmm. But because you are on a budget or you feel like this is a great value, you stick with it. Now, People could say, well, what about Nintendo and NSO and stuff? They're, you know, they're bringing all of these slow games and everything. Okay, yeah, they're bringing all these slow games, but they're not putting their first party on a service or anything. You have to, if you want a Nintendo game first party in, in current times, you're going to buy the physical or you're going to buy the digital version. Or yeah, you're going to get not, a voucher. <laughs> Yeah, but that's not they're playing two different games here, right? And like that's what? but you bring up but you bring up a good point though, is like Microsoft promises to put their AAA games on Game Pass, right, day and date, but if you're not putting any games on the service, then how is it any different from something like, you know, uh PlayStation, you know, PlayStation Plus's extra tier or uh you know, something like Stadia was. I mean, again, granted a little bit different but uh or netflix's kind of thing that they're doing right it's just an indie game service at this point and uh which you know there's some great games on game pass right now like coffee talk uh 2 just came out on Dude. there yeah uh you know there's there's quite a bit on there at you know eastward i'm kind of i'm just kind of scrolling through game pass real quick right now but there's like there's a ton of indie games on there right and it's and it's a great service for and you know you get the EA uh, EA stuff for uh, and the cloud gaming stuff and your uh, gold subscription if you pay the extra five dollars right and there's a lot of good stuff on there but if you're not putting out AAA games or AAA games that people want to play or you know then is it really worth it or are you just going to go buy the game somewhere else and I think that that's if Starfield isn't a hit if I mean, Forza is going to be great, but I think people are tired of the ha the Halo Gears Forza Trinity, right? I think they want something new. Uh, Which is so the question. Is not a hit. Uh, well, I, I think the next two games you're looking at now, right, is Starfield and Hellblade. Hellblade. Because right? he, he did say Hellblade was coming and, if, and some game collections are coming, he said, which kind of points to the Gears collection that's been rumored for a while which i would really appreciate if they updated the gears games uh mm -hmm. so i to me like i don't i don't care about starfield i don't i just don't care about starfield so the next game for me would be hellblade and hellblade looks amazing but if that game does does not perform well right like if that game is not a a technical masterpiece and doesn't mm -hmm. play like a technical masterpiece and doesn't like if it crashes at all or if the resolution or performance modes aren't there or something to that effect like what do you do what do you do if you're xbox you know what i for me personally i'm going to question this is going to sound weird and i know people are going to get me you might not agree with me with this Corey, but i would stop using unreal engine 5 because if you are if well, you're going not, the, end, the engine's fault but that, the thing but the thing about it is why, it, it wait, always what feels, is what is hold on what is unreal it, what does Unreal have to do with on, on, anything? Because the thing, because the thing about it, I feel like they're still. Uh, if I feel like they're still learning that um, engine and everything, and I know that doesn't have to deal with the technical aspect of something like frame rate and, and all of that. But, but what engine are you going to move to? That you have to reteach well, your entire staff to do and port well, all these that's assets gonna, to. That's, and, and that and that's the thing about it. It's just like. Who's I, I wonder who's engine because I th who what is uh Forza's engine? It's, I wonder. The, it's their own proprietary engine, so they have what two of them that one and uh whatever Halo Infinite was, um, Slip Space. Well, they're scrapping Slip Space for. Unreal um, Engine 5 for Unreal for Unreal for the next Halo and, game. 
and and the thing about it, it just feels like um, the Gears the f- team, the Gears team, the Gears team going to take on Unreal Engine Five to a whole nother level. Well, I think been, they're the ones. Been, the coalition is is helping Epic build the engine. Right, like, that's their whole thing. Is like, I mean, <laughs> the coalition is made up of a bunch of ex Epic people who wanted as to continue Ep- to make Gears. Right, like that was the right. whole point. You know? Right, and it feels like, and and it's going to feel like, how come they know how to use this engine, but not everybody else? And I understand they don't have to go to Unreal Engine four or something, but they're going, and I and I trust Ninja Theory to really deliver on great quality of I, their game. I games. trust them. I trust them to do Hellblade right, right? Like I, yes. I do. Uh, but then you look at next year, and you got to think like Contraband. You know, when's that coming? Where's State of Decay? Where's Fable? Where's Perfect Dark? You know, where's the next Halo update? Are we going to get an mm-hmm. update on Gear 6? Like, I I posted in our uh, writing chat uh, for, for Boss Rush, and it was like the... It was the kind of roadmap for Xbox and kind of what they've announced and what's happened already and what's been pushed. And it's kind of, it's kind of updated... Um, and the thing is, is like, I feel like people have kind of forgotten about Hi-Fi Rush already this year, you know? Well, well, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and this, and see, this was the, this was the thing where people were, th- and this is where the Nintendo comes in. This was the idea that people had for Nintendo Switch when the first drop. What is Nintendo going to do about their games? Because people laughed about their launch and their list of games and be like, no one's going to buy the system. They're not going to get the games. And now you literally look from 2017 to 2023 and even with even added on the pandemic and stuff. You cannot deny the high quality that has come from a lot of the. We're just speaking on first party of a lot of Nintendo games that have came out that has sold in the millions that it, whether it's a new IP or it's a continuation in some different, in somebody's franchise, you cannot deny that. And people want that success that's happening with Nintendo to happen on Xbox. And I believe Xbox can achieve it and everything, but I, I literally feel like a, you need to change your mindset on how you're doing games. Cause I know you're trying to go for this more mature kind of, uh, aesthetic with their games, but it's not working. So you need to switch something up. You know, I, I'm glad that you guys are going for this multiplayer or, you know, this online idea or even you try to add some single player and tell these like darker stories and stuff. I could, could truly understand that. But I would love more games like Hi-Fi Rush. I would love for you guys to do uh, to dive in into different uh two different um uh and uh, different artwork and stuff because it, f- it really feels like the different artworks are the ones that's, that everything is tighter and there's no problem. But when you're trying to do something almost realistic like, it's not working for some unknown reason. Like, and and you do have a powerful system but I think your power really comes out for older games and things with a different art style. They're not working for stuff like Jedi Survivor or or Redfall well, or I even mean, not just an, that's a, not just an Xbox problem. That's a that's a Jedi Survivor across all platforms problem. Yeah. So I mean, I just uh, man, I think. I think Xbox, I mean, and, and the thing too is like they're, they're too far, <laughs> they're too far in now, right? To turn back and change directions. To turn back, and, right. You know, they, they have to stick to this plan now for better or for worse. And I, ho- I hope that they, uh, it, I hope that they figure it out because I think, I think the Xbox is a great platform. I think Game Pass mm-hmm. is great. I think the, I think both versions of the Xbox that are out, although I think the Xbox Series S is actually going to hinder them. Uh, a lot in the future um but you know we'll we'll see i i hope that they pull through and i hope that they come out with something that's interesting because like i said redfall is interesting right yeah there's an idea there 
and like vamp like killing vampires is cool and 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 stuff like that but like it's not zombies or anything the game man is just it's in a rough state right now and i hope they i hope bethesda figures that out too um right and and i know people want to like how they hopped on nintendo for a lot of pokemon to come out the way that it is but like i told people i'm like that's nintendo is only publishing it and maybe they did give the pokemon company well, that's uh, a, but that's the same situation thing. red falls in though right and that was, and like I said, that was more into the Pokemon company. But Nintendo was getting blamed for this because their their names are on it and everything. You know, with even with Redfall, they're blaming Microsoft, but because uh, Microsoft owns Zenimax, they're going to get the blame, even though this is something new for RK. And I could give, and you know what, I feel like. Well, maybe Even that, maybe I, that's something. Maybe that's maybe that's on Arcane then, because maybe they should just stick to what they're good at, right? I mean, which uh, which 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 for some people that should be true, but I'm fine with to try something different. I, you know, I and, I agree to an extent, and, but and, this is this is the same thing that happened to Avengers. This is the mm-hmm. same thing that happens to all these studios who create single player games and are either forced to make a game as a service or this giant multiplayer. And they just don't, Ooh. they just don't know how, and they don't hire the right people to help or do. And that's this kind is... of like, that's kind of like where Sony is actually making the smart move of hiring all these multiplayer or buying these multiplayer studios, having Bungie help with their games as a service type thing, because they specialize mm-hmm. in single player games and having that, those teams that specialize in these, um, in these other types of, of game genres, it's, it, it, it's going to help them in the long run. And, you know, I, I hope that, you know, and just for competition's sake that they don't get too far behind, you know, Xbox. Well, right. And Sony is a whole different level of nonsense at times. Um, at times. Yeah, all the time. The, the level <laughs> level of nonsense at times because it's just like uh, that's going to be that. I I I know I'm not on Boss Rush podcast, but I really want to come on later on in the year and just like have uh not a pro and con, but a weird kind of summary of how we look at Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. Um, and maybe this is my personal thing <laughs> and stuff, but it's just like I feel like each of these companies, they're they like we said, they do something well, but something is very off about it and stuff. And it may be because we're not used to it, or you know, we expect a a higher level uh from them, a quality and, and content and stuff. Um but like I don't know. It's I when when Redfall is is working, it is fun. I will say that when Jedi Survivor is is a frustrating, it's it's okay and, and everything. Um, like they yeah. have their issues. I, I just think I just think with Microsoft, I do, I will say this. I do give it to Phil Spencer because he's he he does care and he's doing what Iwata did when the Wii U was failing. Like, he took blame, even though he didn't cut his salary like he wanted. He did take blame. He did accept that, yeah, the game has faults. The game has problems and everything. I almost but, oh, I almost wonder, just to... I, I, I know what you said, like, Phil Spencer cares and everything. I almost wonder... I almost wonder if, if Phil Spencer would do better at a smaller... in a smaller company, because Microsoft is just so big, Right. And like mm-hmm. the way he cares, he almost feels like he doesn't belong at Microsoft. <laughs> if that makes sense. Well, and not not I'm not saying like in a bad way or anything. I'm just saying like he mm-hmm. he cares a lot. He wants to position Xbox as the com- as the as the brand that cares about the gamers and everything. Right. And like, I almost wonder if if Microsoft is too big for that stance. I don't think so. I think if he cared about, I think he needs to be more visible in his caring about games. Yes, 
I can understand Reggie and I can understand uh, Bowser and everything. You know, those are more business minded stuff. But I'm like, you kind of got to give, uh, regardless of what you say about Iwata running Nintendo, he has a history in his development. He, he treated his employees fair so they could continue to bring out the games that he believed in. And regardless if people liked them or not, and whatever they saw, Iwata stood by those games that he was proud that his teens were bringing out and stuff. And if he had, if people had to go and check, if Iwata was still here today um, and he retired and stuff, I think he still would, if, if, if Phil Spencer really wanted to get an idea of doing games and stuff, I think he would have went to Japan to talk to Iwata to get some ideas and figure out some business stuff if he, Iwata be, uh, retired and stuff. Because I'm just like, you are Iwata is a developer at heart. So he knows that what's the ups and downs about game design and development. And if you could come in and give a, and give a solution, they're going to listen to him and do it. With Phil Spencer, he is a businessman, you know, and he has a lot of things that he has to do. That of course he has other people under underneath him and everything in different departments. But he is a businessman, you know. He can't go to a studio and just and pick up a controller and start playing it and everything. If he did, I, if he if he was doing that and being more visible, I think the games that did get delayed and everything, and he he's saying what, the reason why they being delayed would give us more of an idea that okay, he actually got hands on the pressures, and maybe there's some things that need to be tightened up and cleaned up and fixed and everything. So well, guess what? We'll wait. And then if it comes out and it's, and it's better because Phil Spencer went back and played it from that side and everything, he'll be like, okay, this is ready to go. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, like, shoot, Nintendo did that with Bayonetta too. They were just like, we, we, we're going to give you some ideas or we're going to see if we can fix some things and everything. But other than that, yeah, the game is still in your hands. But they sent people to go check up on those games. Especially especially Nintendo's not going to release, release no mess. Someone's going to go in there and find out what's going on and then they're going to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, Anuma don't delay Zelda Legend of Zelda uh, games for almost seven years, six to seven years, without trying to get that game together because he knows what that game exp- uh, expectation is. If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. Yeah. <clears throat> I almost wonder if, like, Nintendo doesn't care about their shareholders the way that, I mean, not in, like, a, a bad way, but, like, mm-hmm. they just don't, they don't act like a publicly traded company the way that Microsoft has to, right? And, I wonder if that has anything to do with a lot of this too, right? Because Bethesda also is now a publicly traded company and they have to get their games out and have their earnings call and, you know, appease the shareholders. And I think that's, I think that's something that a lot, a lot of people who talk about this stuff don't think about, right. Is like, Mm -hmm. this is a business at the end of the day. And whether you're private or public, like depends on what you can and can't do. And I think that, at the end of the day, they they had to get their they had to get their game out. And guess what? When the game came out, Microsoft and the Activision deal uh, appeal announcement came out. Guess what? Microsoft stock prices went through the roof when these two things happened. It looks negative to us because we want the Activision as Xbox gamers. We want the Activision Blizzard thing to you know be over regardless of which way it goes. Right. Right. I would rather it happen because I don't want to see some kind of 
a negative foreign entity to come in and swoop in and buy them, right? Like, uh, like someone like Tencent or the or the Saudi government or something, right? Like someone like that. But like, I just want it to be over, and <laughs> I want to see Crash and stuff on Game Pass and Toys for Bob make it make a banjo game or you know they there's so many talented people other than the people that make call of duty and overwatch and, and diablo right there's so many right talented developers there uh regardless of what you think of the people at the top of that company most of them will probably be gone at the <laughs> at the end of this acquisition right if it happens uh but at the end of the day like the negativity the gamers see boosted microsoft's uh um stock prices stock <laughs> so that at the end of the day that made them a ton of money they had a record breaking quarter regardless of no games coming out right i mean microsoft had uh what minecraft and uh hi-fi rush last quarter right e, uh and e, um... that's uh that's you know that's it Record breaking month though. Subscriptions are up. Uh making and, Xbox and, businesses up. Game sales are up. And, and the thing about with Mark with Minecraft Legends, like uh Phil Spencer said that it was, it became the number one game in Japan on Switch. I was just and I was just like, ooh, that's regardless of that of people feel that like that's bad or good, I'm like, that's a win for Microsoft. You know, well, that's I mean, the stuff that we, we literally want to hear their philosophy on console sales too is so different than everybody else. And I don't, Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody who talks about the console sales stuff is like, it's, it's hard for Microsoft because they talk about, they talk about how many players play their games and you know, that how many people are in the ecosystem instead of like, they don't have that tangible thing that they can point to and say, we sold, 10 million copies of halo we sold 30 million xboxes right like they they go by how they know how to go about it because at the end of the day microsoft as a company is a services company you think of excel Mm -hmm. the microsoft uh, office package you know their outlook stuff their you know they are a services company game pass is a service right and right. So they're reporting the numbers the way they know how because they are a services company and they're kind of blending what we used to know about games with what they view their service stuff. And it's right. hard to grab that tangible number because Xbox is actually doing really well in terms of their business, right? Selling yeah. their games on Steam, having Game Pass on PC and, and Xbox some of their games even on Epic Games. Yeah. And so I just their their strategy is much different and not as isolating as Nintendo's and PlayStation's, right? And and, uh, and, and the thing and the thing about it is, I'm like, if Nintendo came out with physical and digital numbers, folks probably would be pissed off because if physical numbers are really good numbers, just adding digital is only going to raise that number up higher and everything, and people are going to be un- upset that why is this uh, why is this system that doesn't give us the high quality specs like Xbox and PlayStation? Why is it selling, and why are the games are still selling? Well, you wanted if you a number person and you want the numbers. Nintendo is serving you everything with the physical and digital. If that was to happen, why are you mad at Nintendo for doing business because they are a company in business to make money and everything? Mm-hmm. They're providing the product. People wanted it. It rated high or average or whatever is selling what it's selling, and the numbers are going. So you can't be mad at Nintendo. Why would you praise Microsoft or Sony if they were doing the same thing? Microsoft okay. just switched it because their business is we're getting money. Just because we don't see the sale numbers or provide the sale numbers, that's not saying that we're not getting that getting that money. If we got 20 plus some million subscribers, that's giving us, just rating up, I'm just going to estimate it, $15 a month, that's bank per month. Mm-hmm. Whether yeah, you mean, play the games have, or not. Have, let's say they have, they have, what, 30 million... <laughs> 
let's say they have 30 million Game Pass subscribers. Let's just say on average, because PC Game Pass is only $5, but Game Pass Ultimate is $15. Some people probably got a deal. Some people probably, you know, regardless, let's say let's say mm-hmm. about $10 a month, right? Yes. Right? That is $900 million a quarter for Microsoft at this point, right? <laughs> And, you know, that's like, <laughs> I mean, that's that's three and a half billion dollars a year from Game Pass subscriptions. Exactly. You're telling me Microsoft's not happy with that? You know? Free money. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and I mean, just imagine when these games start coming out or pouring out for you know pouring out for for xbox onto game pass and they increase that by 10 million like just uh, let's just say they get 10 million more certain you know people uh that's a mm-hmm. hundred that's a hundred million dollars uh uh a month right that's that's uh 1.2 billion dollars for the for the more for the year which would put it at close to five billion dollars a year if they could hit four f- like 40 million Game Pass subscribers, approximately. Mm-hmm. And know? people got to realize that retail is cut out this whole situation. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> Nintendo Nintendo needs retail, even though they want stuff to be digital because that's more money for them. Mm-hmm. Nintendo is satisfied with the retail numbers, and they need them because they 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 have seen that if if you could get 10 million people to buy just the physical version of a game, Nintendo's going to be like, oh, we, yeah, we, yes, of course some of this money is going to go to retail and everything, but we're recouping a lot of this money that we put in, like, whatever our budget is, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think I think that if they hit the number that they want to, right? Like I think, and if, if, if you can get one triple, if you can get one first party game out of quarter, right? Mm -hmm. I think, and, and on the, in the interviews, Phil Spencer said that they were very close to hitting that. They will probably start hitting that next year. Right. I, I think their fall is actually going to be pretty stellar to be honest with you. I mean, you have, Forza is always a banger, right? Starfield. But the problem, the problem with well, Forza it, it, is, Forza is supposed to drop this summer. Here, so yeah, unless here, he delays yeah, it, here, here, here's the thing, though. I mean, like they're okay. Then I'll move to second half just to uh, appease people, right? So you have mm. you have Forza Motorsport, you have Starfield, you have Hellblade, and a couple game collections, which first of all tells me. I'm guessing Gears is is the no brainer there. I don't really know what the other game collection could be unless they're like doing a HD Fable collection or uh, some sort of terrible Perfect Dark collection, which would also be not a great. Gears idea. would be weird though. Why? Because they already you, did it. Because they, they already did a Gears collection, but they I think be, but they never did a Gears collection. With They've gears, I, I, I understand that two and three were the de- uh and J- judgment was down downloadable once you bought Gears One, the remaster. Yeah, but those are Xbox. but some those people are the Xbox 360 games though those aren't my my point is people still was gonna, considered as a as a collection. My oh. my point is is they're gonna make like a like a Master Chief collection style collection where like all the campaigns are available and then all of the multiplayer maps are available in one cohesive multiplayer thing and i i don't think that'll be as rough as master chief collection because all those games are available on one system instead of spread across three uh three separate systems and different engines they're all running on unreal three uh and i think i think you know if you even if you updated them to unreal engine four Mm. uh you know i don't think that would I think it would be much easier to make a quote unquote Marcus Phoenix collection than it would be t- to do the Master Chief collection. Right? I, I would rather just do a Gears, a, a, do a Gears of War collection and just add one to five with judgment. Don't even worry about one to three because the the gamer thought is it's because they bought Gears of One, the remaster, two, three, and judgment came 
free with those games. So they're considering that as a collection. Even though it's not saying that it's under a collection, they're just considering it as a collection. Where yeah. a Gears well, of War yeah, collection like is that you actually have everything that they have released. Yeah, but all on one disc. Gears two and three at least could use some sort of facelift, man. Like those games look like, I mean, they look great and run great, but they look they look old at this point. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I I think I think they're I think they're. I still think they're going to have an overall decent year, right? I, I I think Redfall is going to... I think when Starfield and Forza and Hellblade come out, Redfall is just going to be a... You know, it's... They're just... You're going to forget about it. You know, this is the same thing that happened, you know, with... with it's almost the opposite situation that happened with Halo. Halo won game of the year at so many outlets, right? Halo Infinite, great game, awesome game, great multiplayer uh you know fun campaign and then everybody's like well halo sucks now no halo doesn't suck they just they lost track of the the roadmap and mm-hmm. fixing the issues and making sure the features that they promised were in there and i don't know, i still think halo infinite's a great game i i understand that that in this world of service games that they are not living up to the expectations and rightfully so right because i mean at this point halo 3 had halo halo th- and granite different time different engine different tech you could pump games out faster back then that's not what i'm saying but at this point halo 3 had like 20 something maps odst was on its way mm-hmm. and like i i it just <laughs> halo needs to Halo needs to figure it out, and I don't know if they're going to continue with Halo Infinite or if they're just going to go to a new Halo 7, I guess it would be. Uh, but, yeah, I think I think that Halo needs a... I think they just need to find their map, you know, find their, find their way. Where I think where I think Nintendo is like we like I like we said with Nintendo, they could fall back this far. You know, even though yes, they want to get they want to get more uh systems sold for a Switch. Like we're probably not getting another Pokemon this year because of um uh, Riley and Scarlet. And people still waiting for those updates. So they could just add more to that I if think they we're want. Let's go games. Probably, but I think Nintendo, like literally after uh, Pikmin 4, we won't know. Like right now, Pikmin 4 is the last game that we know that's coming out with Metro Prime 4 being the most the most expected. Any DLC will probably be from Splatoon 3. Um, Mar- we still got Mario Kart DLC, and we don't know what they're going to be doing with Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, with that. So unless Nintendo have something very hidden uh that we don't know about um at this time, they could fall back and release a little bit of games and everything. Now there might be some remakes, there may be and I'm just excluding third party everybody, there may be some remakes or there may be still some games that uh, Nintendo is working with with third party uh, and second party, so we mm-hmm. may have another game with Platinum. We probably got a game with Kobe Tecmo. We probably got a game with Bandai Namco. Um, we I probably think got some sort of Warriors game this year. I bet there's some sort of Warriors game that comes out this year. We're due for one, right? <laughs> um, actually, no, because we have Fire Emblem already, in Age of Calamity, so. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, where would they? Yeah. I mean, so I mean, the only ones that's on the bucket that we can actually think of is that something for Star Fox related. Um, I don't think we got. I don't think we have anything Kirby re- related ready to go. Um, the Mario team could be doing something, so we could see that Ducky rumor, Ducky Kong stuff. Who knows? Um. We already did Mario and Rabbit, so that might be put on hold until 
a couple a, a well, little bit down the line. That's a whole nother can of worms that we probably <laughs> don't have time to. <laughs> it's a but like oh, right X now, Defiant. people seem to like X Defiant, which is surprising after the whole <laughs> kerfuffle about the. Uh, they did remove the Tom Clancy name, although they're still using Tom Clancy IP. Uh, but I think a lot of people think that game as a Call of Duty competitor is different and interesting. And uh, if they do the free to play thing right, I think they could actually mm. do something really interesting. And and and, and yes, uh, and we I know everybody that we talked a lot about Microsoft with a little bit of Nintendo again, but I think this runs it to. Um, kind of why E3 is important to have these discussions. It's just not about what it's it's just not about what's coming from the fall and the winter or what's happening on that console and stuff. This was a I, I feel like we were getting better information and anticipation by seeing these reveals during E3. Yes, it's yes, it's still a direct style kind of thing now, but it was just like at least that we had a better understanding on how we get played, uh, on, I mean, how stuff was planned. So we can have discussions on how am I going to do my August, how I'm going to do my September, uh, how I'm going to do my October, November, December, you know, are, are, are some stuff going to get delayed and everything? And it was just like, we were able to come together and talk about those things and even make our list that stuff that were anticipated or stuff that we were glad to see or can't believe that got announced and everything. Um, so, and, and I think that's why I personally feel like E3 was supported. I know a lot of people just like, they're great that E3 is not happening this year and all these other companies could do do that stuff and we still could come together to talk. But I just feel like the spirit of E3 for me, it's like, it's going to be missed because I love that we have, okay, Xbox is showing later on that night, Ubisoft is showing. So I got something scheduled. We could talk about stuff. We get stuff planned. Um, we could re- not research, but we could look over things and still discuss and everything. Yeah. It's a lot of production work to it. But it just, uh, to me, it just felt more fun during the E3 presentations than actually being at the E3 show. I have to add, you know, it's just, it was just fun that way where at least we got to see, we got to see what we know we was, what we was getting in the fall, fall or winter, or at least something that was coming, um, depending on if it was shown or not. Uh, gameplay wise shown or if it was going to be cinematic and stuff yeah. because yeah. I'm just like I know I know Remedy is busy but that's true I, I feel like Microsoft gets to talking to Remedy because if Nintendo talks to Remedy that is going to be something no one expects well, at this time Remedy's Nintendo- not going to make anything for Nintendo that's why <laughs> <laughs> true, true, but I, but I, but to see if they, I mean, for them to, for Nintendo to go out and talk to way for for events wars and stuff like there, I literally would see. I would, I literally yeah, would love to see. Way forward is a way different company than someone like Remedy. But, but I, I literally would love to see Nintendo going to way for it and just be like, can you guys make a game in this art style? Or what would you, what would you put on a Nintendo console, um, and, and something? Because even if even even if Nitty wasn't talking to Remedy on Switch, but Switch Deluxe, like just their actual next gen, I'm using Switch Deluxe as a going to everybody, um, a Switch Deluxe, and they were talking to Remedy to bring something to that console or create a new IP, and they will fund it. Dude, what like that would literally be insane because then, uh, well, not really Sony because Sony just had the exclusive to show control, but they haven't made anything for um strictly PlayStation. But if Nintendo was talking to Remedy to bring something. Or even, what if they took one of their old IPs and stuff? Like, well, I mean, Alan Wake is on Switch. <laughs> yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on Switch. Well, um, but I'm just like, of it, but it's there. 
is there. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm just like them going to them going to remedy and be like, you guys, we want you to make something for our current console or our next console. What would you guys bring to the table? We'll fund it or Man, we have some idea. Awesome. You know, it'd be awesome for remedy to do it would be eternal darkness. Oh, heck yeah. That would be that cool. I could see that. that I could see. Cool. I know they wouldn't, but I, that would be super cool. Even if they wouldn't, I think it would fit. Cause, cause I, I feel like I think I think Remedy would be up for it because I'm just like personally for me. Yeah, well, they've got they've got that so many projects at the works though right now. On. Remedy. I mean, between the Max should... Payne one and two remakes, uh, did they actually two, announce that? Uh huh. Alan Wake two, and then their new project like. I'm 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 worried that they're running themselves thin at this point, but mm. I, I don't run that studio, so I'm not. <laughs> but but I could actually see them going to Remedy and doing that, like, and I think Remedy wouldn't pass it up. And I'm not saying for the budget, the budget reason, but to have the opportunity to make a game for Nintendo, like those developers, when those developers would be ecstatic. And probably like hype to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I don't think it's a budget issue. They made they made control with on a budget of like thirty million dollars. So that's like mm-hmm. that's nothing in the AAA space at this point. Um, you know, plus like you have Nintendo's budget, so like you wouldn't even have to worry about budgeting. But uh, I think you can make a pretty interesting. Uh, a pretty interesting version of eternal darkness with, you know, a small budget and a interest, like interesting effects. Also like whatever Nintendo's controls are at that point too, would be really interesting to implement in there. Right. Like Mm. HD rumble in terms of like, uh, something's happening on screen. You're rumbling. Uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know what they could do. I'm just trying to think, uh, uh, you know, when it's like one o'clock in the morning and I'm trying to think on the fly, <laughs> it's not working very well, but that's the that, that's just kind of what I'm getting at. It's like they could do something interesting with Nintendo's hardware as well, uh, because that's what Eternal Darkness is kind of known for. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think Remedy would I think Remedy would be up for it. I, I, it would definitely make sales. It would get definitely get people talking. Trust me, if they got if. uh, uh if The Witcher 3 got people talking in a very weird way on Switch and it got people to go and buy that game, Remedy yeah. could do the same thing. Yeah. I I actually really I think The Witcher on Switch is pretty pretty it's a pretty good port. Um not not saying if you don't have another console or something to play it, but if you want portable Witcher, you know, the Switch isn't a terrible ch- place to play it. <laughs> Right. I mean, if you're trying to go in to get the story and say that you actually beat the game, you don't care about anything else. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Let's, I mean, no. I, the most I played The Witcher was on the Switch version, which was like, you know, also play, <laughs> most people play beat the game on there too, so I'm not. I'm not trying to. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, shoot. Doom was good on Switch. I, I want to play Wolfenstein. Uh, Doom, Doom, Doom. After they like after that first or second patch was pretty. I want to say it was actually pretty decent. I actually mm. also like not to like <laughs> plug the Switch version of Wolfenstein, uh, but the way they developed it and made like the concessions they made and just like the concessions they made almost fit with the time period that the game is set in because it, it changed the way the game looked a little bit and ran uh-huh. to the point where like, it felt like, I don't know if video games were made in the sixties, I guess. I don't know. I don't know, but it, it, <laughs> it had this really cool, like effect on the game that made, because you know how, like when you watch period piece movies, now they all have that st- stupid filter on them that makes them look like oh it's the 1940s let's make everything look yeah yellow 
like it it had that a similar effect on Wolfenstein and I thought it was really cool to play the game like that. Granted, you <laughs> you put Wolfenstein 2 on an Xbox Series X with the <laughs> with the enhanced mode turned on and it looks a thousand times better. But like yeah. the Switch version was like yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, and, and for some people, like, like I said, sometimes looks aren't even aren't everything. Sometimes the gameplay has to match the look because if the gameplay is janky and the game looks great. You'll know the difference. You'll hear people talking. Trust me. You'll hear people talking. Yeah. So. Well, Corey, I think we had a good mini block. I think we had a good discussion. Uh, I mean, it was it's it's good. I'm uh, I mean, we're it's Zelda week. We should probably touch on that a little bit. It's it's uh, Zelda week. Uh, it's, uh, yes, you know, by the time this comes out for everybody, Zelda will be two days away and counting. Um, yes, it's this game is going to be it's going to be massive in terms of. I think in terms of sales, in terms of popularity, in terms of just the sheer size of the game in general, I I'm really interested okay. to see how how people react to some of the new abilities. I know the right. controls have changed significantly, I've heard, since uh Breath of the Wild, and so I've actually stopped playing Breath of the Wild to get myself off of those controls. Mm-hmm. Um actually been playing a lot of mario kart recently and it's uh pretty uh, pretty good uh, and to give everybody heads up we have not looked at the leaks we're not talking about any of that uh we are literally waiting for the game to drop so that we can yeah. play it um <laughs> give our own opinion about it uh i'm i definitely want to get stephanie on that episode uh yeah to talk um and then definitely hear like different opinions from the Brawl Stars crew and from the community because that uh, next Friday, I mean the twelfth, is going to be a big day. And of course, people are going to be showing stuff at midnight. So if you don't want it to be spoiled, you know, don't check Twitter. Um, for some people, don't check te- check Twitch or anything uh don't check youtube gaming or anything or facebook gaming don't check any of that like streaming wise if you see someone saying that they're streaming it avoid and everything like if you really want to go fresh uh if you got it digitally play it at your own leisure when it drops if you're getting the physically once the store is open you guys go pick it up uh experience it in that way because i know for a lot of us the texting's going to be off the chain. <laughs> Discord is going to be jumping uh, and everything. The messages, the messages is going to be like really good. I should yeah. say. I'm interested. I'm interested to see how this, uh, how it runs and how it plays and these interesting little things that are happening. So it should be fun mm-hmm. as they say. Yeah. Yes. Well, with that, everybody, have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you next time on Nintendo Power Block. Bye, everybody. Woohoo! Bye. Nintendo Power Block is a product of Boss Rush Media, LLC, and is recorded from our headquarters in Akron, Ohio. The show is hosted by me, Edward Varnell. My co hosts are Corey Derrick and Cordy Yikes. You can find Corey at I am Corey in HD on Twitter and Instagram, as well as hosting the Boss Rush Podcast and Tower Casuals, the Destiny Podcast. You can find Cordy at Cordy underscore Yikes on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. You can find me at that Richard Cole on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Nintendo Power Block on all social media platforms at Power Block Podcast. You can also follow Boss Rush Media and Boss Rush Network on all major social media platforms. Join the Boss Rush Network, Discord, and Facebook groups to interact with other friends and fans. Visit BossRush.net for more great content and Patreon.com slash BossRushMedia to learn how you can support this show. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.